Hi guys, Elliot here from the product team at Soundcraft and welcome to chapter 5 of our UI series tutorial videos. Today I'm going to be talking about sending to buses and primarily our AUX sends and effect sends buttons here on our L1 navigation tab. In my previous tutorial I mentioned channel centric bus sends. In my previous tutorial I mentioned channel centric bus sends. This is my channel 1, I'm now sending channel 1 to AUX1 to AUX2. We call that channel centric, but on the UI console, you can also mix bus centric. Now to do that, what we can do is we go back to our mix page here and then we select AUX sends. And now we are mixing two monitors in our bus centric view. Here are my input channels and now I'm sending them to AUX1. You can see this page has again some familiar appointments, but there are some key differences between this and the mix page. First is the addition of the L2 tabs up here. Here we have AUX 1 and 2 that are lit up and 3 and 4. I'll talk more about those later. The channel strips themselves have a dB value. We have a mute button, a pre or post switch which is per channel. I'll talk about that in a second as well. A combined PFL and AFL meter, the same as on our main mix page, including peak meter here. A fader level for our contributions or our sends you can also notice this little yellow line here underneath the fader now this is what we call fader glow and i'll explain more about that in a second and of course at the bottom here we have our channel label which remains the same you also notice on the screen that we have our master fader to the far right for our main left right speakers but we also have our aux one master here that has been pinned beside the left right fader so if i move the fader bay here you can see the AUX1 master is remaining the same as well as the left right master. This is so it's always accessible to us if you need to make any quick changes or turn the wedge down quickly, anything like that. Now first I want to talk more about this fader glow system here. And we use fader glow so that the user of the console can get a very quick visual cue as to what the faders are controlling. As you can see on the mix page, the faders have no fader glow. That means those faders are the main sends to the left right. In the AUX sends page, yellow means that the fader is adjusting a pre-fade send. A pre-fade send is great for sending to things like monitor wedges or in-ear monitoring systems as the pre-fade send is not affected by the left-right position of the fader. We also have another colour, which is green. Now this is for a post-fade send. Now straight away on this page you can see very visually that these faders are not controlling the left-right mix. So it's pretty difficult to get messed up and to start adjusting these faders thinking you're adjusting the left right. That's why this fader glow system is so great. So I spoke about this switch briefly, but what this switch does is it toggles the send for this channel to AUX1 between pre-fader and post-fader. As I mentioned, pre-fade is great for things like monitor sends, things like that. But for some applications, a post-fade send would be great. For example, say we have a playback coming from our USB channel over here. Here's a USB channel here. Now I want to send a little bit of my USB player to the monitors, just so that the musicians know what's going on in the front of the house during an interval, something like that. But when I turn the faders down on the main mix page, so when I turn these down, I want my sends to my auxes to be cut off as well. At the moment, as these are pre-fade, it doesn't matter where these faders are set, my musicians are still going to hear my USB player. So what I can do is I can set these sends to be post-fade. So you see that? They're green, green fader glow. Everything's cool. Now, if I go back to the mix page, when I turn the faders up on the mix page, it will increase the send to aux one. But ultimately, if I turn the fader all the way down on my main left right, then my musicians will not be able to hear this send, which is great. It also prevents any mishaps where playback is still going through the monitors when it's not in the front of house. Each of the channels can be made post-fade on the fly like this, but we can also turn a whole bus into post-fade by simply clicking and holding a post-fade selection, set all channels to post, and then clicking OK. Now the whole bus has been set to post-fade. Again, we can make some sends pre, some post. 
or we can just select pre hold down and press OK and now all the sends go back to pre-fade this very same setup exists for the AUX1 and AUX2 tabs but as I keep mentioning we also have AUX3 and 4 up here that have been apparent in a few of my tutorials now now these correspond to the headphones output on your UI console out of the box your headphone output is configured as a standard PFL bus so you solo a channel and that is sent directly to the headphones bus which is perfect for front of house applications however if you're in a band and you need extra auxes and or maybe the UI is by a drummer and they want to use a pair of headphones we can repurpose those headphone outputs to be aux 3 and aux 4 and we can do that from the settings menu and I'm going to show you that now so if we select the settings cog here and we enter settings which I'm already in now our very first setting here is for headphones out out the box as I said it is set as a master slash solo bus but if we switch that to aux like that and now return to our aux sends aux 3 and aux 4 are now lit up and available for me to mix to and now aux 3 corresponds to the first headphone output on the UI and aux 4 corresponds with the second headphone output on the UI each have their own individual output and they now have their own individual processing as well this means on a UI 12 you can double the outputs if you need to for a specific application as I mentioned say the UI was by a musician and they wanted a stereo in-ear mix we can actually pair these buses together to create two stereo aux sends for things like in-ear monitoring and for the headphones outputs on the console itself now we can do that from the mix page here if we go back to the mix page and scroll across until we see our four aux masters here if I click and hold aux1 I see an option for stereo link if I engage stereo link you can see now that the two masters are tied together we have this yellow handlebar up here which indicates the buses are now stereo and now if we go into aux sense tab up here we can send to aux1 and aux2 in parallel and the final telltale sign that this aux is now set as stereo is this pan control up here it is now available to us to be used in this configuration XLR outputs 1 and 2 will act as the left and right outputs for your single aux if I want to make auxes 3 and 4 stereo I can do that in the exact same way by going to the mix page pressing and holding aux 3 and enabling stereo link 